Well, good morning, friends. Good morning. morning. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. We have some guests with us this morning, so welcome. I am not celebrating Halloween, (laughs) despite the look I have here this morning. We are the second Sunday of Advent in the purple, but in our diocese, we're also recognizing gun prevention awareness, and orange is the liturgical color for that. So that's why I'm wearing the orange stole. I do not own an orange chasuble. I don't know that they even make one, but uh, I'm wearing both here this morning, celebrating Advent and recognizing gun awareness violence, which we will talk about and pray about in our, our liturgy here this morning. So I'm glad you're here. Welcome to the folks that are watching us at home. Um, Let us praise and worship God. So thanks for being here. Purple and orange together. It does look good.
So we begin on page four of your service leaflet with the lighting of our Advent wreath. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, as we travel towards Bethlehem in this journey of Advent, we come together in the midst of a busy season to take a breath to slow down as we anticipate Jesus coming once more into the world. We are invited for a time to breathe in together the life that God gives us, to listen for the beating of God's heart and the blessings and lessons this season brings. As we gather for this time of worshipful anticipation, let us in silence rest in God's presence. May Christ, the one whose coming we await, fill our homes and hearts with joyful anticipation as we journey to the manger. Amen. Each week we light an Advent candle as a symbol of our journey. With its light comes our prayers and our stories. And so on page five, as Bob lights two purple candles today, The candle of this second week of Advent is the candle of peace. Today, the flame of this candle reminds us of the peace that Jesus brings into this world. Jesus said, I give you peace, the kind of peace that only I can give. It isn't like the peace that the world can give. So don't be worried or afraid. Of old you spoke, Uh, by the mouth of your prophets. But in our days, you speak through your son, whom you have appointed the heir of all things. And we pray together, grant us your people to walk in his light, that we may be found ready and watchful when he comes again in glory and judgment. Amen. And we continue on page six. Let me take a moment at this time to introduce to you our our guest priest here this morning, Ryan Missel. Father Ryan uh, is a priest in the Diocese of Missouri and could, if God answers our prayers, be your priest come the end of January. So he was in town yesterday for the ordinations we had at the cathedral and uh, uh, came down this morning to, to be with us and to meet everyone and to check out the digs, as, as we say, <laughs> right? So welcome, Father Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. So on page six, blessed be the one who's coming, we await. And blessed be the one who comes to set all people free. Amen. In the tender compassion of our God, The dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in the shadow of death. Desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And I'm going to have you turn to the first page of your insert bulletin this morning. On page one. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. 
Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, whose only Son came to preach peace to the nations, hear us, we beseech you, and comfort us with your steady hand, as we come before you this day in the wake of unspeakable violence, in a world that seems hopeless, Help us to remember that our hope rests always in you and in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us glorify the Holy One as we proclaim, O light of the world, firstborn of creation, radiance of glory, light from light begotten, God self-revealing, holy, bright, and blessed, you shine upon us. Day's light is fleeting, your light is eternal, and we look to you, our light within the shadow. We sing to you, O Creator, Christ in spirit, you shine before us. Light of the world. O Jesus Christ, we bless you. Giver of life and child of God, we praise you. Here with us, the universe proclaims your glory as you shine among us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's holy word. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort. O comfort my people. I was hoping she was going to play the Messiah because that's what this is. (laughs) Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Couldn't resist. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. 
O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read this psalm responsibly at the Astrid. It's from Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. And blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and he shall make a pathway for his feet. The second reading is from Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that when the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, While you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Shall 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Give us the kind of peace that only you can bring so that we may share it within our families, our community, and our world. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So on this second Sunday of Advent, we lit our second candle on the wreath to focus our attention uh, to the burning light of peace, the true peace that only the Prince of Peace can bring for our troubled and divided nation and world. We hear the psalm writer in today's psalm, verse 8, Write, let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. And in verse 10 we hear, steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. I don't think there's any more beautiful imagery in all of Scripture, nor richer in pastoral comfort. With the alienation, hostility, and mistrust in our nation and our world, how can we hear this wonderful vision of a righteous and peace-filled world. In our midst of concentrations of wealth and deprivation, how can we hear this psalm's proclamation of abundance? We often hope that things might be just a little bit better. But the psalmist is dreaming that things might become 
you know, everything is working for God, the way God intends it for creation. The psalmist offers us a vision of salvation and God's intention of this world that stretches from earth to heaven and back again. It's also a vision of salvation that runs counter to our many current societal practices. In our New Testament reading from 2 Peter, we read in verse 13, but in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. And therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. And so during this second week of Advent, we hold fast to these words while we are waiting, while we are alert, while we are awake, while we seek the coming once again of our Prince of Peace. And we strive to be found without spot or blemish at full and complete peace in our hearts, in our families, in our work, in our communities, in our nation, and in our world. Full and complete peace a world, nation, and community free of gun violence and hatred and the brutal killings of innocent lives for pure sport, intimidation, or power. Today I bring forth the indelible stain of our society related to gun violence. No debate, this is a very difficult subject to discuss because we each have our own personal feelings and beliefs when it comes to gun ownership and gun use. But I believe we actually share far more common beliefs when it comes to sensible gun laws than what our differences might be. When was the last time you heard a sermon preached regarding gun violence? Perhaps it's been a long time because it's such a sensitive and emotional topic. Last week, our Advent focus was on hope, and today it's peace. And our baptismal covenant requires us to be peacemakers, to strive for justice and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are the ones commissioned to go out into the world to proclaim the good news of God in Christ. And just as we heard of John calling for repentance and baptizing in the Jordan, so too must we grasp God's presence in our lives in order to share the good news to the world and bring about full peace. So how are we doing with that? sharing the good news and loving our neighbor as ourselves. It's a challenge. And it's something we haven't seen a lot of in the past decade or two. Political divisiveness, ethnic, racial, and gender hate, and gun violence continues to escalate out of control. The grief and the sorrow we hear on the six o'clock news can be too much to bear. How many more mass shootings can we bear? How many more senseless killings can go on? What will finally be the breaking point for you and for me? There is something something terribly wrong in our society. We have a divided... or on social media. And we can't seem to disagree without being disagreeable and violent. Our streets, our offices, our churches, our nightclubs, 
Our public squares, our schools, are splattered with more innocent blood each and every day. More graves are dug each day. More hearts are broken each day. More future lives destroyed each day. Grief and sorrow have no limit. This past week, four individuals were shot and killed at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, including the perpetrator. Dead are professors Patricia Navarro Velez, Cha Jan Chang, Enoko Tekamaru. Yet another horrific event and tragedy. And the conversation isn't just about guns, although that's certainly a huge part of it. We need to look at the bigger picture of how we've made violence our norm, how we endorse and encourage it in so many ways. Our children shoot imaginary people in video games. They're treating killing as entertainment. And we normalize violence through our television shows and movies and monuments. We sell guns as a solution to solve all of our problems. And we applaud warriors and dismiss peacemakers as out of touch. The one with the most bullets and bombs gets to have things their way. We have reached the point, I believe, where we're fearful to send a loved one to school, to church, to work, to the mall, to a nightclub, to a concert, without concern that they could get gunned down by a deranged person with weapons. And it's now a documented fact, gun deaths are the number one killer of our youth. How did we get so lost? And how do we find our way back? I don't ask these questions as a judgment or criticism of you or anyone else. These are questions in my head and the struggles I have in my heart. That's all I've got to give you. I have no answers. I have only my baptismal identity and my struggle to put the two together. Last week, Reverend Edie read a poem of hope that the 21-year-old, or the 20-year-old Palestinian victim, Hersham Awatarni, who was attacked and shot along with his two companions in Burlington, Vermont, over the Thanksgiving weekend, wrote when he was in sixth grade. Hisham still remains paralyzed from the chest down. The shooting of these three innocent men were very difficult for me to process. And then to add the innocence of a sixth grade vision of the world was almost too much to bear. Where is the humanity in our society? Where, oh where, Lord, where? So two Sundays ago, I shared with you my great blessing of baptizing M and giving her absolution for her checkered past, finding a lost sheep and returning her to God's holy arms. I want to share with you today another event that that took place in my chaplain ministry about a year ago. I had a meaningful visit with a male patient, mid-60s, a faith-filled Christian who said he volunteers regularly with his con- uh, congregation. And as we were wrapping up our visit, I asked him if he would like me to lead a prayer with him. And if so, what would he like me to include? What was heavy on his heart? He quite firmly stated that he really didn't want to have a prayer because prayer doesn't work. Because God never answers his prayers. I was taken back. 
Here is a man of strong faith. He loved the Lord. He gave many volunteer hours of helping others. Why was he refusing prayer? So I ventured out onto the limb and I said, why do you feel prayer doesn't work? His response, I've been praying for years and years for the same thing over and over again. And God has never answered my prayers. Okay, I asked. Any chance you'll share with me what you've been praying for? What is it that God is seemingly ignoring? He responded, an end to children being killed in schools. His prayers were for an end to school shootings and killings. That's a valuable prayer request, I responded. It's one that I pray all the time, too. Lord, please stop these senseless killings from happening. And I'm sure most of you are with me as well in praying for that. I was silent for a brief moment, trying to understand his feelings of loneliness and abandonment by God and not answering his prayer. And when I finally spoke, I went on to say, Here's what I'm thinking. I really don't believe it's God's problem to fix or solve. It's our problem, you and me and all of our families and friends. It's our society's problem to fix. God hears our prayers and God wants our prayers. But I believe God also wants our action to accompany our prayers. And God wants our faithfulness to God's commandments. And thou shalt not kill is a big one. I said, I'm sure millions and millions of people are praying that same exact prayer intention that you're praying each and every day. We could say God isn't answering their prayers either. Why do you think that is? Friends, I have to believe that God doesn't want anyone's life to be taken by a gun or any other form of violence, especially the life of an innocent child. But we have made choices in our society and our nation. Our nation, I believe, is guilty of valuing guns more than children's lives. We continually condemn our legislators for always being quick to offer thoughts and prayers when a mass shooting occurs because no action ever follows. The issues may be debated sometimes, but action never seems to materialize. Nothing will be solved unless there is action that takes place. So my patient wasn't thrilled with my response to his mindset, but he listened and asked for some time to think it through. I convinced him that we should pray about it, which he was agreeable to. And I prayed for his healing and recovery, and then I prayed that we both would have the will and conviction to start taking action to bring an end to gun violence and senseless shooting of children, as well as others. I would encourage each of us here today and those listening at home to do the same. Let's continue to offer prayers for an end to senseless killings, but also let's take action to ensure that things change. Write or make phone calls to your legislators, local and national, and let your voice be heard. Vote out politicians who don't represent your values. Volunteer to help politicians who share your similar values to get elected or re-elected, locally and nationally. Donate to organizations that work to bring an end to gun violence or mental illness. 
I believe that each of us, each of us, you and me, if we just do a little bit more, just a little bit more, we can make a huge impact in addressing our problems and showing our love and concern for our neighbors. We must take care of this fragile planet that God has put into our care. We must respect and cherish all that has been given to us, especially the gift of life, the gift of our children's lives and our neighbors' lives. May our prayers always be followed up with action. Amen. At the end of our service this morning, I'm going to invite you to come to the Fellowship Hall and to sign some letters to the president of the Missouri Senate and the uh, president of the uh, Missouri House of Representatives. It's a form letter. It's talking about we would like to have debate. We would like to have discussion. We're not trying to get guns taken away from anyone or, or abolish the Second Amendment in our nation. We just want some dialogue. And we never seem to get that with our current legislation. And so the letter is encouraging conversation. And so I'd ask you to come up and sign a letter and put your name and address on it. We've got envelopes. We'll mail them. Uh, we'll, we'll cover the cost of that postage. Or if you want to take it home and mail it, that's up to you. But I would ask that you please come up and, and take a first step here of, of working on abolishing this stain we have in our society. Thank you. <clears throat> so we have a special prayer this morning, a litany related to gun violence and killing and peace. And Father Ryan is going to lead us in that. This is on page five of your insert pamphlet there. And called us to live together in harmony and peace. Surround us with your love as we face the challenge and tragedies of gun violence. For those we love, known to you alone, loving oh, God, God, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of, of your peace. peace. O God of righteousness, you have given our civic leaders power and responsibility to protect us and to uphold our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For all who bear such responsibility, for all who struggle to discern what is right in the face of powerful political forces, loving God, make us instruments of your peace. O God of compassion, we thank you for first responders, for police officers, firefighters, and EMTs, for all those whose duties bring them to the streets, the lobbies, the malls, the homes. Give them courage and sound judgment in the heat of the moment, and grant them compassion for the victim of gun violence, of those who are maimed and disfigured, of those left alone and grieving, and of those who struggle to get through one more day. Bless them with your presence and help them find hope for all whose lives are forever marked by the scourge of gun violence, loving, loving God, God, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. peace. 
O God of remembrance, may we not forget those who have died in the gun violence that we have allowed to become routine. Receive them into your heart and comfort us with your promise of eternal love and care. For all who have died, for those who die today, and for those who will die tomorrow, loving, loving God, God, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. peace. O God of justice, help us, your people, to find our voice. Empower us to change this broken world and to protest the needless deaths caused by gun violence. Give us the power to rise above our fears of futility and grant us the conviction to serve as advocates for change. For your vision of love and harmony, loving God, make us instruments of your peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect reign no weapon is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. Guide us with your cloud day by day and your fire by night, and grant us wisdom and courage for the facing of this hour. All this we ask for the sake of your love. and compassionate energy to witness your love. Children, give us a voice to call for just laws, for an end to hatred and violence, for ready access to mental health services, and for dialogue filled with respect and careful listening. Let us never wash our hands of any life lost and never cease to witness to your love until we are safe and living in peace. Strengthen us for the work of carrying your cross and bless our efforts to convey the unfathomable love, Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. prayers of the people of God. Yes, so God. Let us pray for the world that the peace of Christ might take root in every human heart and put an end to all forms of violence, greed, and division. Hear us as we pray. Enlighten us, O oh God. Let us pray to make our voices strong and vibrant in the cause of justice. Hear us as we pray. Enlighten us, O oh God. Let us pray for our world leaders that the Holy Spirit might guide them to promote the peace and understanding of Christ's gospel. Hear us as we pray. Enlighten us, O oh God. Let us pray for all to hear your call of love above the noise of hectic lives. Hear us as we pray. Enlighten us, O oh God. Let us pray for the courage to change that which must be changed. Hear us as we pray. Enlighten us, O oh God. Let us pray for all persons who suffer due to violence that they might find hope in people's Enlighten us, O oh God. Let us pray for ourselves that we might become peacemakers with our families, our neighbors, and our communities. Hear us as we pray. Enlighten us, O oh God. Amen. And 
No, no, Nan, do you want to read the prayer intentions for? The, the sick and in need? Yes. Dan Featherston, Linda Vanderpool, Donnie Wilson, Dixie Berryman, Grant Dade, Patricia Williams, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Nathan Teal, for the people of Ukraine and Russia, Jimmy Carter, Heather, Chris, Randon, Deb Brewer, Brian Lee, Julie, Jennifer, Aaron Opa, TJ Knoll, Trace Jessup, the people of Israel and Palestine, and those you remember in your own hearts. We pray for the deceased, Gerald Jones, Rosalind Carter, Barbara Herbert, Gerald F., Sandra Day O'Connor. Are there others? Inspire us with the gift of shalom, the gift of wholeness and the promise of your presence. Give us wisdom to seek nonviolence as an answer to the violence of our lives and world. Give us courage to seek wholeness in a fractured and divided world, to find reconciliation rather than revenge, to abandon the instruments of violence and death and entrust our lives, our homes, and our families to you. May your presence fill us and others with the thirst for unity, wholeness, and the desire to see all peoples valued as created in your image. May we and others receive your shalom, that we might be faithful instruments of your love. Amen. 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 Okay, we're not done praying yet. On page 10 of your service leaflet. Holy God, we have fallen short in loving you and loving our neighbors. And we stand beside each other and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Most holy God. In the midst of this season and expectation of new life, we confess. The gifts entrusted to us, and we have not treasured the gifts of others around us. Holy Trinity, make us holy. Holy God, make us whole. Amen. May the Trinity of love bring you back to God and forgive you all of your sins. Be assured of God's eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you. Let us offer that sign to each other. God's peace. Sisters and brothers, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
page 11. Sisters and brothers, God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed be your name, Lord God of time and eternity. For you have come to your people and set them free. You have spoken through the mouth of the holy prophets and remembered your covenant of old. You have your servant David. Your son Jesus took upon himself on the cross the cost of our sin. And through him you revealed the fullness of your promise of mercy. In his resurrection you gave us knowledge of salvation and the forgiveness of our sins, that we might serve you without fear and holiness and righteousness all our days. And so we gladly thank you, joining with, our, with the company of angels and archangels and all the hosts of heaven in un, their unending hymn, God of the future and the past, you promise that all flesh shall see your salvation. Show us the salvation you bring through the flesh and blood of your only Son. As your prophets heralded his saving glory, sanctify your church with his promised coming. Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ our Lord. who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Refining spirit, you burn away all that does not endure your presence. Reveal your mercy in the very crucible of your love. Protect your sons and daughters who are facing a crucible of trial and temptation or testing. And amid the suffering of your children, reveal your eternal grace. Refine and strengthen the hope of your church throughout every adversity and every danger. Set the hearts of your people on fire to seek your justice and share your mercy until your dawn from on high breaks upon us. And on that day of your coming, we stand clothed in the righteousness of the Son.
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. for you, God's holy people. So come to this table, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here in a long time. Come, it is Christ himself who welcomes you to meet him here.
Continue our worship on page 14. Sisters and brothers, God is with you. And also with you. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, for whom we await, you have fed us. We may be ready to stand before the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There is a special blessing for this morning uh, on the back page eight of your uh, little insert this morning. I pray may God bless you with hope that your life and actions may rekindle the flame of possibility in all you meet. May God bless you with dreams, that your vision may be a fire that transforms the world. May God bless you with courage, so that your faith may boldly proclaim the reign of the Prince of Peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And then I'm supposed to announce uh, that the hymn that's in your service leaflet uh, did me. My new friends in Christ, go into the world. Be of good cheer. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Honor everyone. Respect the dignity of every human being. Go into the world that together we can be advocates of hope and agents of peace. Go in peace, go in hope, go in love.
Okay, a few announcements. I don't know, I guess we've been very, very good because there's a little feast set up on the counter up in the hall. So please come up and enjoy all of that. Uh, wonderful. We definitely want you to come over and sign some letters. Uh, Kent Miller, our representative for the Diocesan uh, Gun Prevention Commission, will be over there to help guide you and assist you and making sure we do everything uh, right. Okay, uh, So please come join us. Let's take that first step. Uh, on the ledge there by the organ is another uh, insert for the second week of Advent, Scripture Passages and Reflections. So pick that up and take that home with you. Um, And then this evening at seven o'clock, six o'clock, six o'clock tonight in St. Louis at Trinity Episcopal Church in the central west end of St. Louis is hosting an interfaith prayer service. Our Bishop Dion will be there. The Archbishop of the Catholic Church of St. Louis will be there. A bishop from the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America will be there. And it will be live streamed. And I put it in our, our newsletter this week, but there's another flyer or two up there with, with the, the website. And you would go to um, trinitycwe.org, trinitycentralwestend.org, so CWE. So I invite you to tune in. I'm planning to be there. You might see me on your, your screen. Huh? Um, what else can I share? Friends, I am just so full of joy with how many people have volunteered to help with our Christmas dinner. And I just want to thank you all for that. <laughs> Of course, say we still need a few more things. Um, so on your way to the fellowship hall, if you would stop at that bulletin board and see some of the things that we still need, uh, things that come to mind are bottles of water and uh, cupcakes um, are some of the things that are still on the list uh, to, to uh, bring for our Christmas dinner that's going to be on Christmas Day at 4 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Street Level is going to be helping to bring um, some of our neighbors surviving homelessness to this meal. Um, I appreciate all of the socks and gloves that have been deposited under the Christmas tree in the fellowship hall. I'm going to be taking those home to wrap them up and so they'll reappear as wrapped gifts under the tree next week. But we could always use more of those and I've made little stockings that are hanging on the tree because if you're like me you need a reminder, something tangible to like keep in the car um, when you're running to Target. So please grab one of those stockings um, and also just take a look at that bulletin board on your way into the fellowship hall and see if there's something that you uh, can, can sign up for. But thank you again so much. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about what we're going to be able to do for our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. So I plan to be there at the dinner uh, so you can get good brownie points uh, for showing up. <laughs> Uh, even though I may be a lame duck now, um, but I will still give you brownie points, so please. Uh, also, let me just remind you that on two weeks from today is Christmas Eve. Uh, it's a Sunday. We will still do our 8 and 1030 services, and then we'll kind of redecorate the church. And we will have our 4 o'clock service Christmas Eve. Four o'clock here in the church, we're doing lessons and carols along with Holy Eucharist. So a special, special service. So please plan to be here. Please invite your family and friends and neighbors and coworkers. Uh, we've extended a warm invitation to the folks at St. Paul's and in Sykeston to be with us. So I hope that you will be able to join us and celebrate with us. We will also do an eight o'clock mass on Christmas Day, on Monday, uh, in our traditional style of no music and just very casually sitting around in a circle. 
uh, we will do that. I probably will be able to convince them to sing a carol or two, because uh, we can do that a cappella. So uh, if you can't make it uh, Sunday evening at 4, come, come Monday morning uh, to be with us. All right. Anything else? Tony? All right. There have been contributions beyond me, and so I thank those additional contributions. And so please come, come eat, and there's extra coffee being made, and wants to a uh, good chance to kind of um, get to know Father Brian and just relax with him. And we've still got a couple weeks to, to think about before. Yeah. Very good. Please join us. Come and sign a letter. Blessings on your week. It's been such a joy to worship with you this morning.